Hello everyone. Good afternoon. How are you all? Or good good afternoon, good evening, I guess, depending on where you are. How are you all? It's good to be back. So let me know who's here, where you're from, what you're up to today. How's things with your neck of the woods? It's a lovely sunny day here. It's supposed to get to the mid 70s, I think. We had some, it's funny, we had really cold last week. We had a couple of days when it didn't even get out of the 40s and now here we are with 70s, so it's crazy. <laughs> so yeah, let me know who's here. I see a few people, so don't be shy. And I am going to jump straight in to our um, cards today without too much chit chat. As you know, we have a brand new catalog coming out in just a few weeks and we are saying goodbye to, let's see, where do I put, we are saying goodbye to this one. Actually, let me flip this. Um, we are saying goodbye to this one soon. So I always like to, um, during the month before the new catalog comes out, I try not to show too much of the brand new stuff. I want to kind of focus on my favorites that are maybe retiring or, um, and some, um, yesterday the last chance start sale started and there are products up to 60% off. So I thought I would focus on one of those product pro products that has always been my favorite. And that's this one right here artistic dyes so that's what we're going to be working on today so i will hi lisa hi nedra yes lovely weather isn't it i've been um trying to um i'm off to mexico in a couple of weeks um and my legs are so white so the last couple of days i've put on some capris or kind of bermuda shorts <laughs> with my sunglasses um, and um, trying to get a little tiny bit of color on my legs maybe before I go um, so we'll see how that goes but anyway this um, let's talk about this for a little bit so this is was part of a bundle originally and there was a matching stamp set and the both were retiring this time. The stamp set is no longer available. And I went to, I forgot to pull mine out um, to show you what the stamp set looks like. Um, and it's kind of watercolory images. But to be honest, the dyes are my favorite. And I've used these quite a bit. And I love them because you can do so many things with them. And I, um, I ran out of time this morning to pull out some other cards that I've made in the past with um, this bundle and particularly the dies but I will put them out pull them out after this and I will post some pictures on Facebook to show you um, the um, other things you can make now these are heavily discounted at the moment um, I believe they're 1750 and they were like 35 or something so I think they're 50% off which is a really good deal um, these ones obviously they work with the um, stamp sets um, so those may not be of that much use to you if you don't have the stamps, um, but these two you can do so much with. So for today, I thought I would use, um, I titled this out with the old and in with the new, because I thought I would use some, these retiring products, and I have another retiring product to show you in a little bit, um, that's one of my favorites, and then I thought I would show you some of the new ink colors and what we can do with those. So I only got three made. I have two still to do and I have that all. That's what we're going to make together. But this is kind of a fun technique and you actually end up, I've done one for each of the in colors and this is kind of like a two for one card. You actually get, um, you get to make two cards from one um, because you're cutting two lots of die cuts and you're cutting them in half. Um, you got like a little black piece there. Um, you get to um, make two cards from each set of dies. Um, so this is, so these are the new in colors. So this one is Shy Shamrock. And it kind of looks on the screen, on my screen, it looks kind of like a turquoisey blue. And it's more like, I would say like a light Kelly green. It's a really nice um, green. And then this one is Peach Pie. Um, which is, we don't have anything like this at all. So that's, it's kind of like a 
a light orangey color. And then this one, which I think is everybody's, well, a lot of people's favorites. When we were on stage in Houston, we got to put, um, I think like a ball or something, like a kind of a ping pong ball or something in a, um, they had a display asking which was your favorite color. And this one and Petunia Pop, I think, were the two favorites. This one is called Summer Splash. And um, it's a lovely blue. And then we also have Petunia Pop and Pretty Pink, which um, I will make those um, in just, just a moment. So I thought I would walk you through the process, the kind of the entire process for one card. Um, so that you could see because we've got adhesive backing on here and I've got some little tips for the die cutting. So I thought I would show you the, the, the whole process. So let's get started. And um, if I haven't said thank you for, for joining me today, thank you for watching. Uh, hi, Denise. Yeah, Denise, you're normally the first one. <laughs> Um, so, but good to see you. So yes, if you're watching live, if you're watching on the replay, thank you so much for joining me and I hope you're going to like the cards. So let's start with um, some um, adhesive back sheets, what we're going to need for the dies and my basic white cardstock. So let's see here. I'm slightly... I'm almost organized today. <laughs> so um, what I figured that you could do is, so this these cards, there's kind of a bit of work up front and a bit of fiddly work. Um, but once you've got everything prepped, um, it's just kind of like an assembly line. So this would be a good project if you were going away somewhere. You could do all the die cutting and the cutting of all the card stocks ahead of time. And then just take everything with you to assemble. And you don't need very much um, once everything's prepped. You really don't need many things to put everything together because there's really not much stamping, just the sentiment. So there is a bit of work up front, and I thought so. I thought I would show you the process. So this is a piece of just eight and a half by eleven cardstock. And what I discovered is I can get six um, of this die cut from one piece. Um, so I'm going to cover the whole piece with um, adhesive sheets and I'll show you how I do that. So the adhesive sheets, unfortunately, are not the same size as the cardstock. So I don't know who came up with the idea for the adhesive sheet size. But anyway, the adhesive sheets are 6 by um, 12. So I'm going to grab two and these come in a big packet. You get 12 sheets, so you get a lot and they, they're big, so you get a lot of use out of one packet. So what I need to do is I need to cut these down a bit. So on one, I'm just going to cut an inch off. So it'll be six by 11. Because don't forget our basic white is eight and a half by 11. So we'll cut an inch off that. And I can save all these little, all these little scraps are useful for little, little word dies or little, little other little dies that you might be using. Um, and then the other piece. So once this goes on to our... Um, this piece goes on to our the eight and a half and eleven. I'm going to have a strip here that's eleven by two and a half because remember this is six. So I need a strip that's eleven by two and a half. So I'm going to cut off again an inch, and that will give us the eleven. And then I'm going to cut off two and a half, right? Because that's right, yes. So I can put these little pieces to one. I can put those back in my packet, actually. And I can save those for some little projects. So definitely you want to invest in the these adhesive sheets if you're going to do a bunch of these cards because it's otherwise it's um, it's kind of tricky to... This is a very delicate dye, obviously. So to try and put adhesive on these and glue them is, um, you know, you don't really want to be doing that. So let me show you how I attach these. So there's three, um, there's three panels that peel off. I can find which is the back and which is the front. Oops. 
Oh, again. So there's three um, panels like this. So what I like to do is I fold, I peel off a little bit of the, um, let me zoom in a little bit. See if I can zoom in so you can, and I can zoom out again. So I'm just going to peel off and let me move this out of the way and that way you can see the contrast better. Yeah. So I'm going to just fold back a little bit, like half an inch, three quarters of an inch, doesn't really matter, on all three strips. Two, three. And then what I do is I flip it over and um, have this area at the bottom. Grab my eight and a half by 11. So this part here, I haven't peeled anything back, right? But I'm going to use this to line up. So I'm going to line that up along the sides and the top. And then if I pull this bit up so you can see the bottom, then all I have to do is push this down and it should be perfectly lined up. Should being the <laughs> operative word. So then let me zoom back out again a little bit so you can see a bit better. Then what I can do is I can just fold this back. It's a little bit tricky to show you this on camera, but I hope you're getting the idea. And then I can just pull off these three pieces. And smooth it down and this way I know it's going to be perfectly lined up because you don't you want to try and avoid having sticky pieces hanging off the edge of your um, um, cardstock because it'll um, stick in your die on your die plates and kind of make a, a mess a, gen a general mess so if you can avoid getting stuff overlapping um, that getting right up to the edge so I'll do exactly the same with this piece now I'm just going to peel back two pieces so I thought it might be helpful to let's see where did my comments go okay comments come back there we go hi Connie um, so I thought it might be helpful to see how I like how I kind of do this especially when I'm doing multiples okay so I've done the same thing here and then flip it over so I've got my oh I did that wrong didn't I maybe I kept the wrong piece okay let's trim some off I must have put the wrong piece away so I need to trim off like maybe three quarters of an inch. I don't know what I did there. Let's trim some off about an inch or more less than an inch it looks like. I must have put the wrong piece back in the packet. Never mind. Let's see if that's about right. Yeah. That'll work. And then again Feel these little pieces back, fold it over and line up the piece that's not peeled back with the top and the edge of my cardstock, push that all the way down, if I do it sideways like this you can see, and then I can pull off these two pieces. Yes, yeah, should have done the other one sideways. It's easier for you to see, huh? So there you get the idea. Now we'll cut this. I'll cut this into six. I'm just going to show you one, but I'll, I like I say I think I think if you wanted to make a set of these, I would show you kind of production style how to do it. So I'm going to cut this in half, so at four and a quarter, and then I want to cut this into thirds, and it's just under. Um, three and three quarter inches so I'm going to do three and three quarters and then go back like a like a sixteenth um, like one little mark um, and that should give us three pretty similar size pieces and then I can do that with this one too and I'll have my so three quarters back a notch quarters back a notch okay so those are ready to go for my six um, die cuts. I'm only going to do one with you. Um, and then for, we need, so we're going to die cut one flower from white and then one from um, the in colors. So I've got, let me see here. I've got a piece of pink. This is pretty in pink. This is the fourth in color. 
Um, and then I've already cut um, a piece for this. So this is the same as the white pieces. It's um, uh, four and a quarter by just under three and three quarters. And I've cut a piece of adhesive sheet the same. And I'm going to do exactly this, uh, apply this exactly the same way. Now, this, I've got like a little narrow strip here um, that I'm just going to peel off. And I'm going to use that as my, um, you know, instead of folding a piece back, and then, and then this should line up again the this where the adhesive is, is exposed at the bottom and just line this up and then it makes it super easy because nothing worse than starting off at the top and then being all crooked by the time you get to the bottom and you have the adhesive showing on the, sticking out on the sides and this is like a nice easy way so i hope that's helpful all right now to the die cutting. So I need this. So we're going to make the pretty and pink card. So I'm going to put all these ones away and save them for another. Now, you're probably thinking, oh my gosh, to make a bunch of dies with this, because um, you know everything can get stuck into these little holes and you have to take your pokey tool and poke them all out. So I have a little trick for you. Um, let me zoom back in again. Oops, hold on a second. Zoom in, there we go. Um, all right, so this should fit on here just about perfectly, and it does. So the trick to die cutting these, or one trick, so that you don't end up with a million little things that you have to poke out each time, is wax paper. Now, I meant to bring up from my kitchen. I'm, I'm actually using this box of... Um, 10 by 10 counterfold wax paper and now what induced me to buy this big box because you might notice there's 500 sheets <laughs> so this is going to last me a lifetime um, and I don't know why I bought so many or where I bought these but a restaurant supply store or I think Sam's Club I might have bought them but I'm sure you can find smaller boxes, maybe like at Smart and Final. I don't know if you guys have Smart and Final um, that are outside of California. Or you can just use your roll. And I meant to bring it up from the kitchen, but you know, they're just the roll of wax paper that you can buy at the grocery store. That works too. And that would be um, a lot less wax paper than buying this big old box. I think this is meant for um, people that make sandwiches in delis and stuff for wrapping things, but I'm not entirely sure. Um, so what I'm doing with this is I'm going to cut this down to about the same size. So I'm going to, it's already folded in half, so I can cut through um, two layers at once. And it's very thin. So I'm going to cut this at approximately the same size. So four and a quarter by um, three and three quarters. And I can do four out of one sheet. Three and three quarters. So I'll just do four for right now. But obviously you can go ahead and pre-cut as many as you need. You will need a, a new piece for each die that you cut. All right. So now I'm going to get grab my um, plate 60. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, so I've got my, um, I've got my sandwich here, so I'll need actually my um, number one, um, you know, my thick plate, uh, and then my number two, and a number three, and then I'm going to put my white um, piece, make sure that the adhesive is on the back, don't cut it, the first piece I cut backwards, so the adhesive part was on the top, which was no, no help. <laughs> um, and then a piece of wax paper and then your die and it should just about fit in there looks good and then this one on the top and then I'm just going to turn around and run it through my die cut machine and I'm going to run it back and forth so I'll be right back So the other thing I need is my um, brush and 
um, foam. Now, this is the old brush um, that Stampin' Up! used to sell. There is now, they don't sell this one anymore, but, but they sell an attachment to your take, and, your, take your pick tool um, that you can get also. But I just, I had this, so I continue to use it. So let's see what this looks like. Put this away. And so what I find easiest is to just peel off this piece around the edge first. And what's weird about this is there's usually one place that no matter how many times I run it through, um, it doesn't cut quite through. This little tiny petal here, um, or leaf, um, does not cut through all the way. So no matter how, it's this one right here. So I just put my thumb on it and then I just pull gently. Try not to, there we go. But yeah, it's that little tip there. No matter how many times I run it through, it doesn't cut. So that part of the die, apparently, the blade does not um, work. You know, it's not a, a blade part on it or whatever. Um, okay, so this is what it looks like. Now, this is the really important part. You want to put your die in here and you're going to brush really, really vigorously all over. So, and this gets a bit messy. That's why I have my foam in a tin. So if you have a tin or a Tupperware, and you're going to, and you, you're not going to hurt the actual die, die cut, because the metal die is still protecting it. So, but you're going to brush over really well. And then here's, let's see if this is going to come off. Find an edge. Here we go. Here's our die cut. I'm not going to worry about all those little pieces for right now. And then here, this the wax paper is still on here. So I've got to see if I can grab a piece of that from... Let's see, let me get my pokey tool here. This is the old Stampin' Up! what we used to call the pokey tool. And then here we have a lovely... Now, I don't know if there's something... This is very delicate, so I don't know that there's really anything that you could do with that. But maybe, I don't know. It would be a little tricky to... <laughs> glue down maybe you could use it as a stencil or something but anyway I usually just throw that part away but if you want to try and do something with it now look at this oops I've got caught in the now I don't know if you can see but there's not one piece of anything left in there do you see that oh actually I lie there's a couple of little pieces here but that's all right that's easy sometimes if you just actually tap on the end of the tin will come out but look at that isn't that amazing hi Jeannie oh I hear hi Heather Heather says I learned the hard way that thicker cardstock helps with that too also helps me not to mangle the cut out of small yeah um and I think the adhesive sheet helps a little bit too but when you get pieces stuck in here with the adhesive sheet and the cardstock it is a pain to get them out so this is a really really um good trick and the wax paper is pretty inexpensive. So what I usually do is just dump this off and put it underneath. And then when it gets really full, I empty out. So let us let me do the, um, the colored piece. So this is pretty in pink. Again, make sure you've got the cardstock um, facing up. Grab my sandwich here. So have some of you seen this trick before? I'm sure you have. I'm, I did not come up with this. The other thing I see people use is dryer sheets. I don't, that is not my, if I was desperate, I might use dryer sheets, but they, they're they kind of messy and they really mess up your, um, now even the little wax paper pieces stick in here, but with dryer sheets, it gets really messy and I don't know. And it's just messier, I feel. So I do not like to use dryer sheets, but you can if you don't have wax paper. It still really helps with the dye not having pieces stuck in it. It's just, it's kind of messy to me. So, okay, I'm going to turn around and do this one. Okay, here we are. So we'll do the same process with this. You can uh, leave the 
a surrounding area on while you do your rubbing with the brush but to me it, it, it's it's kind of coming off anyway but again Connie says parchment sheets oh yeah and that works pretty well too yeah I mean that's kind of similar to wax paper isn't it so and I have my parchment paper downstairs too so I rub the dye with the dry oh you rub the dye with the dryer sheets Jeannie says she rubs the dye but do you actually put the dryer sheet through the die cut machine too or you just rub the dye okay so here see that little petal again is like that little leaf is it's funny how that always no matter how many times I run it through that little one always gets well, okay so let's do another brushing I'm going to try and get right onto the tips of the leaves because this is not only going to release the the, the cardstock but it's also going to get out all those little extra little pieces so yeah there's a few different now what I do need a tip for is how to clean my brush because as you can see all this <laughs> so if you have a tip for getting all those out other than just picking them all out with your fingers I would appreciate that right so again let's see if we can get this off there's our, and again, I'm not going to worry about all these extra pieces for right now, and you'll see why. And then again, let's see if I can get this. Sometimes there's a little piece you can grab. I'll use my... Oops. There we go. Yeah, my, this is my lovely lacy dye again. <laughs> so what, I'm sure you could do something with these. Just, they're so delicate. I don't know what to do. And, again, there's a couple of little pieces, but really not much compared to if you weren't using this. Just wonder. So, yeah. All right. So that's that. Let me put away this stuff. Put away my extra pieces of wax paper. All right. So now I've got these two pieces, I need to cut them in half. And this one, I thought, oh no, how am I going to do, <laughs> how am I going to do that without messing up? So I was a bit nervous about using my trimmer. You probably could. In fact, I did. Oh, look, all these pieces are falling out. Um, I did use my trimmer um, for one of them and it was fine. I put a brand new blade in and I was really careful, but... The subsequent ones, I actually just used scissors, and it was fine. So I have a pair of, you don't want to use your snips, you want scissors with a nice long blade. And what I did is I cut through um, between these two leaves here, and then this part of the flower. So I'm just going to hold them together. So if you had a, like this type of... Um, this type of cutter, what do they call this, a guillotine cutter, um, that would work. Um, or use your trimmer if you have a nice um, sharp blade. But I'd be nervous if you don't have a good blade about cutting with the trimmer. But I find scissors, just if you have a pair of scissors with fairly long blades, you can just do it in one cut. So I'm just going to cut. Just like that. Easy peasy. All right. So now to assemble the card. So like I say, once you've got all this prep done, um, you can move on to the assembly part and it's pretty easy. So uh, let me grab all my pieces. I've got a white card base. I've got a piece of black. And then I've got a piece of pink and a piece of white. And I'll tell you all the measurements in just a second. And I need my stamp. So um, the stamp I'm using, I'm doing all mine as thank you cards because I always need thank you cards. Um, sympathy would be good. I often need those too. But I'm going to do all mine because I, I've only done like one set of each color. And don't forget, I've got um, another half of each die to, um, to make 
five more cards. So maybe I'll do those as sympathy cards, sympathy. But I'm using this Seaside, Seaside Bay set that is also retiring um, and it's still available. And I can't remember, let me have a really quick look because I think I still have it open. Oh no, I don't. Oh yeah, here we go. I was gonna tell you, no, I don't have it open anymore. Um, I was gonna tell you how much it is, but maybe someone would like to look up, um, look it up for me. I believe it's still available and I'm not sure if it's on sale or not. Um, but I really like this set, it has some lovely, and the die cuts were lovely too. And the paper that went with this originally was really nice. So I still have some of that. So this is going away. So I'm using thank you for everything. And so let's figure out how we're going to do this. So this is a regular card base, um, basic white thick. So this is eight and a half by five and a half, scored at four and a quarter. So just your regular card base. I'm going to burnish those folds a bit more. And then I've got a piece of basic black, and this is three and seven eighths by five and an eighth. Um, and then these pieces are going to go like this. So these pieces are both the same, and they are three and three quarters by two and a half. So basically, they're going to make a matte layer that's going to be three and three quarters by five so three and three quarters by two and a half for each of these um, and so I need to do the sentiment so on these um, so you can kind of do them as you like you can put the dark at the top the white at the bottom um, I did these ones with the dark at the bottom um, which I think I like better this one I feel like maybe this is upside down <laughs> I feel like this flower should be at the top but you know, you can do them how you like, really. But I think I'll do... I like this way better, I think. Um, and I wanted to do the sentiment on the coloured cardstock because I wanted to use the matching embellishments and I figured those wouldn't really show up if I put them on the... the um, you know, if I did the sentiment up on the white and then the embellishments down here, they wouldn't really show. So that's why I did it this way. So let's do it the same. Um, so, and then what I did is I actually, um, on the first one I did, which was this one, I felt like it didn't show up that well. So I actually embossed the next two and it looks a bit bolder. So I'll do that quickly and I'll, you've all seen my little tip for, um, embossing, easy embossing, um, in black because black, black embossing powder, I'm sometimes feel like is hard to use because it gets everywhere. So what I do is I just use my Versamark and my Memento, and you want to go into your, let's see, where am I doing this? I'm doing this in the bottom right, bottom right. Um, Versamark first, then Memento, and then onto the cardstock. And I was using my grid paper, but I'll see if I can get it straight. That's pretty good. Then I'm going to dip it quickly into my clear embossing powder. Oops, I've gone off camera. Sorry. There's my... And I'm just going to dip like this into... And... Let's see. So Jeannie says she just rubs the dye with the dryer sheet and she doesn't send it through. Don't forget, if you were doing multiples of these, to clean your stamp off every time um, before you put it back in your Versamark ink. Otherwise you're going to have a very dirty Versamark ink pad. So, all right, so now the assembly. So I will stick these onto here first, grab my seal. And I'm going to just line this up with the equal, dis equal border on the sides and the top, and then hope that I cut the bottom piece right and that it works the same <laughs> so 
So for my other set, well, let me show you. So, I, so I've got my four pieces here. So I'm going to put this piece on the top like this and find the matching white piece, which is this piece. And then for my other card, I'll have another flower like this. So probably what I'll do on the other card is I'll put the darker piece um, on the top and do my sentiment up here, kind of like I did on this one. But I do like this flower on the top, I think, as opposed to that one. But it doesn't really matter. I think, I think whoever receives it, your card will like it either way. So I'm going to put this... The, I, this top part on first because it's a little bit wider than this piece so I want to make sure that I've kind of got it centered so let's peel off the backing and why I haven't bothered taking out let's find a good place where I can there we go um, poking out all these pieces is usually when you pull off the adhesive backing those all come out so let's see Most of them have. I've seen nearly all of them have come out. It's just one little one, or a couple little ones. Thank you. Oh, hi, Christine. I'm good. How are you doing? All right. So my Facebook lives now. Um, I think I told you last time, um, I'm going to just be doing them on the second and the fourth Wednesdays. Um, I'm just trying to cut back a little bit. It's really hard because I really do enjoy doing it, but I find I'm not having time for anything else. So um, I have quite a big team that, you know, I, I like to that I like to do a lot of things with them and for them and um with everything else going on, keeping other customers happy, and that is just a lot of work. So I'm trying to just be cut back a little bit. So, but I'll try and fit in some other videos too. So that's one piece, and this is very forgiving. You can lift it up and move it until you have it, until you're happy with it. So I just want to make sure that my edges here are right along the edge of the pink. And again, this is not my idea coming up with this concept. I, you know, you can and you can do that if you don't have these dies. You can definitely do it if you have another large um, die, um, floral or otherwise. You could definitely do this same technique. You could do it in black and white. You could do it in with some metallics. All right, so let's peel off this one now. That sounds fun. I, I, sister says she's off to Yorkshire. That sounds nice. All right, so there's the other part. There were a couple of little pieces stuck in, but not very many. So then this one, it's a little tricky. You have to make sure that you're... Let's see, this goes... How does this go? Like that, I think. Is that right? No, oh, wait a minute. There we go. Like that. I think that's. No, it doesn't look quite right. Hold on a minute. Is it this way? There we go. There we go. That's right. I think. <laughs> And then what I do is I usually just flip it over and give it a good old rub. Make sure it's on there really firmly. Okay, so pretty. All right, on to the card base. Come on. You don't have to use the black, but I think it does add quite a bit. And let's throw these pieces away. And let's grab... Okay, so there's two different kinds of um, in-color um, um, embellishments. There are these ones, which are called 
the 2024 to 2026 in color shimmer gems. If you can see, they are kind of shimmery. And then there's these ones, which is what I'm using. And I, I like the, I like them both. But these are matte dots, and these are my preferred ones. I like them both, but these I like, and these are my favorite. These are called in color resin dots. And you can see I've nearly used a whole. Actually, um, we're doing some in, co in color stuff for my team mating. So I just got make and takes out yesterday, and I gave them all some in color gems to go on their projects. So. That's why I'm down to just a few here. Um, okay, so I'm just going to put, let's put my lid on the pokey end so I don't poke myself. So I'm just going to do a couple of these. Pretty in pink. Jeannie says, very pretty black makes it pop. Yes, I think so. All right, so um, I've still got, and I still need to do my um, Petunia Pop too. I've actually cut these, so I'll just show you what that's going to look like. And I'll assemble that afterwards, just in case you haven't seen Petunia Pop. That's going to look like, let's see, what would I do with those black? It's going to look like this. So let's see, this one's going to go up here. And this one's going to go down here. So that's Petunia Pop. That's what that one's look, going to look like. So I will finish this right after the Facebook Live. And um, then I'll have, be able to take a picture of all of them. So, and my last tip for cleanup here because as you can see I don't know if you can see but it's a bit messy um, is I like to bring in my little ladybug have you all seen my little ladybug oh ladybug where are you um, oh dear. she's hiding oh here she is okay here's my little ladybug it's a little vacuum cleaner and she makes light work of all those little pieces and I got this on Amazon, and you can get lots of different kinds, but I liked the ladybug. There we go. It's just battery operated, and it just, this bottom piece pops off. So um, I was actually using this, um, Sylvie, my dog, um, is frightened <laughs> frightened of this. I had it running, and she was, she was, uh, she was not going to have anything to do with it, so I put it on the floor with a treat on the top and she eventually came up it wasn't running she eventually came up and took a treat off the top um but then i had it on the counter and i moved something and it fell off and it all came apart and all that stuff went everywhere and that freaked her out again so she's not a fan of them of my ladybug at the moment so funny anyway so let me bring back all the cards so what do you think do you like them is this something you would have a go at like say it's a bit of a fiddly work up front but um i think um they say that you could do all the prepping the die cutting and the prepping ahead of time and then um say once you've got everything prepped you don't really don't need much in the way of products you just need to do your sentiment and so it's a good project to take away with you and so what do you think hope you like it i'll finish the other one off thank you nedra um, and so don't forget, this is in the, did anyone look up the price of this, the, um, seashell, seaside bay? I don't think it's on sale, but it is retiring, so it's going away, that, this stamp set. Um, so don't forget, check out the, check out the sales. Um, there's a lot of stuff up to 60% off. And also, don't forget, um, let's see, Lisa says, she's, I see many cards in my future, good. Um. Also, don't forget, there will be some price increases in the new catalogue. So, um, card stocks, um, ink pads, ink refills, envelopes, and some adhesives. I'm not sure about the adhesive sheets. Um, I'll have to look that up and I'll make a note um, when I do, go do all their Facebook edits. Um, but this month is a really good time to stock up on all those consumables before they go up in price so stock up while you can and um anyway thank you so much for hanging out with me today i have to go finish my taxes now 
So I'm sure you're going to have more fun this afternoon than I am. <laughs> but I appreciate you hanging out with me. And I will be back in, let's see, will I be here in a couple of weeks still? Because I'm off to Mexico. But I think I'll still be here. Yes. So it may be a quick one. Um, and um, But I will be back in a couple of weeks. I will see you all soon. Thanks so much for hanging out with me and have a great rest of the day. Bye, everyone.